This is Twit. So Monday, I get up. I got a day off. I think I'm going to relax. I'm going to take it easy. And the first thing I see is, oh, no, WPA2, the Wi-Fi encryption we've been recommending for everybody, has been cracked. I know yeah, we'll be literally. spending... Literally. I know we... K, K-R-C-A-C-K, which stands for... Um, key re uh, replay. Key, reinstall, key reinstallation attack. And I know Steve Gibson's going to dive into this in great depth, but it has uh, something to do with the the uh, four step negotiation. Uh, the third you, step of the four step handshake can be replayed, and you uh, get to the reset nonce. the key. But yeah, the nonce. And once you get the nonce, you're in. What that means is somebody who can get at, first they have to have physical access to the Wi Fi network, right? Yeah, they have to be in proximity to the Wi-Fi network. Yeah, sitting on your doorstep. They can't do it remotely. Like they can't right. do it from across. They the need country. to be they a have neighbor to be within your Wi-Fi range. Yeah, you, or whatever. Then if, now, correct me if I'm wrong, Renee, but my understanding is they would have the same kind of access that you would they would have if you were in a coffee, an open access coffee shop, and you signed in and they signed in. Right at that point, so the story on your keeps network. mutating, and it seems to depend a lot on a lot of different things. When it originally came out, it sounded like exactly that that they that you, effectively. The, the the full encryption was gone, and you would have, be as vulnerable as you would be sitting at a Starbucks on an open access point. And some people get confused like that because some coffee shops they give you a username and password, and they use WPA2. We're talking about the ones that don't force you to enter a username or password. It's an open Wi-Fi access point where anyone else on that network can also see what you're doing on that network. Um, and now it's sort of like, well, they can do some kinds of attacks, but they can't do other kinds of attacks. And they can not They can change this, but they can't change that. They can read this, but they can't read that. Uh, I think just to be prudent, we should assume that they have pretty good access once they get on your network. I think that's the safest thing to assume at this point. Okay. Uh, and it's a, an issue, first of all, because we our advice has been for years remember when we, f we first started using wi-fi people said use web wired wireless wired equivalent protocol then web was shortly thereafter cracked because it wasn't well designed at all but ever since we've been telling everybody i've been telling everybody's been saying all you need to do to secure your wi-fi yep. network is turn on wpa2 encryption it works it's effective now it's cracked like web was much the same way rep web was cracked uh Patches are going to be a problem, not because I would imagine. In fact, I've already talked to the folks at Eero because they're a sponsor and they uh, they have it in beta. They have a, a patch already in beta. Has Apple patched it yet, or are they about to patch it? It is in the current beta. So the iOS 11.1 beta for both developers and the public has the fix in it, and that means it'll roll out to everybody within the next few weeks. It's just a little ways out. Uh, Windows is apparently not vulnerable. Android and Linux, depending on your version, could be. Android phones have to get an update. Google has an update. They will be pushing it out soon. Just everybody, everybody responsible is saying, oh, yes, apparently it's easy enough to fix that they're beta testing the fix right away. Uh, some companies were notified ahead of time. Monday was the public announcement. But, of course, the security researcher who found yeah, this. Yeah, BSD kind of jumped the gun, which I think is going to lead to some controversy moving forward. They put out a patch that you could have diffed and sort of seen what the different, what the uh, vulnerability was. If you were Well, and there are patches for many Linuxes. Uh, Google has a patch for Android. Uh, so patches are rapidly flowing out. You, yes. you will want to patch your router. Here's the problem. Your Internet of Things devices... But two problems. One is if you have older hardware. So, for example, the latest Samsung phones, the Pixel phones, all of those will be fine. If you have a much older phone, the odds of you, get, especially on certain carriers, the odds of you getting an update are really low. The you estimate might want to is about forty-one percent of Android phones will never get yeah. updated. Same with routers. Like if you have a, a really modern router from a good vendor who's paying attention to all those things, like they, those will be updated. Apparently, the airport is not vulnerable to this attack. I, I wonder if like Microsoft, Apple didn't follow completely the standard and that ended up being lucky for them Isn't that uh, when it comes to this. Wow. But um, there there will be some, like if you've had a 10-year-old router and you don't even, like in the manufacturer, you can't find anymore, you probably want to replace that router. But uh, it doesn't have to be your router that gets attacked, right? It could be any device on your WPA2 protected network. The exactly. clients, yeah. Uh, which the client, means all of those IoT devices, most of which don't get updated ever, are a real problem. Right. Yes. No. Totally. And uh, especially, uh, there was some concern over the security cameras that sometimes come bundled with your modems that treat it because they're a bundle. They treat it as 
uh, an encrypted network when it's not. They just basically say that it must be a trusted device and don't even bother encrypting it. And if you get into that, uh, again, like it, it's it's unclear what they could do. Maybe they can make your printer put out a bunch of garbage, or maybe they could try to put malware on your device, or maybe they can't really do anything at all. We don't we don't have all the details on a per device basis yet. But anything that 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 you you can't positively identify as safe, I think just out of prudence, you have to decide is not safe at this point. And since you don't know the state of uh, public Wi-Fi access points, whether they've been patched or not, you probably don't want to use Wi-Fi out when you're out and about. You might want to disable Wi-Fi on your iPad, your phone, and your laptop for now, right? Um, uh, I certainly I mean, disable. Go ahead, Andy. I certainly dis disable automatically connect to known networks, uh, at least for the next month or two. Uh, but I think that my my uh, understanding is that if you're using VPN, it's not going to really affect you. Yes. You shouldn't be saying you should have been using VPN anyway. Yeah. Well, that really makes it even more important. In fact, I, uh, I've been, I got yeah, a couple of days ago, and I've been using it now. A new, you know, I'm a big proponent of the tiny hardware firewall. I've been recommending them for a while. That basically, uh, this is a great solution. They just came out with uh, this. They call it the, I can't remember the name. It's a funny name, but it's thirty or forty dollars. It looks like a USB key. Uh, if you want to use it with a Mac, you have to use an adapter. You can't use it, obviously, with a phone or iPad, but I can tell you how you can use it. And what's smart about this one is this looks to your computer like an Ethernet dongle. So the computer already has a driver for it. It goes, oh, yeah, yeah, you've got Ethernet. You join the Wi-Fi network, even the unsafe Wi-Fi network. Uh, you, it works with captive portals because you can do MAC address spoofing. So you can actually uh, join the captive portal on your computer and then put that MAC address in this device. And from then on, your connection is coming through this USB port. It's coming through a router, but then you can turn on VPN. You have to, the drawback is this comes from Wi-Fi Consulting. You have to use one of their services, either Hotspot VPN or their new Black Cloud hosting, which I really like because each person is on a separate VPN server. Um, and uh, it doesn't slow it down too much. If you use this full time out and about, you'd be fine. Plus, you turn this into a Wi-Fi access point. So now you can have your phone. Basically, you set up as a Wi-Fi access point. This phone, the iPad and everything, join this one, this VPNing everything, including your laptop, your access point, uh, your phone, and your, uh, your iPad. So there are solutions out there. So a VPN will protect you. Is that correct? I believe uh, so, yeah. yeah. It, so yes and no. Are they, I mean, If it's a good the, the VPN. Yes, which is increasingly hard to find. There's some really. Uh, if you roll your own, <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, if you roll because we found out that some that we thought were trustworthy have been turning over records they said they didn't have. Yeah. So it's it's incredibly murky. If you have your own VPN, uh, but like again, like you can switch to Ethernet, but maybe they're already on your network or they got into your network through your kid's Nintendo game or something. I mean, like the, the whole thing, um, it. It, it's nightmarish. I don't think that's an alarmist thing to say. It's 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 nightmarish at this point, and it's going to take a while before we're through it. The, the only there's a couple of good news points here. One is that it's backwards compatible, so we don't need WPA3. We just need them to patch uh, this problem. The other side is when you patch the clients, you're reasonably safe. You should patch everything, of course, but once a client gets patched, it's it's relatively safe to use that client. Uh, and the third thing is most people aren't hot targets for this. Like you might have a prankster in your apartment building who downloads some freeware. You know, exploit code and and does make your printer do silly things, uh, but the chances of you being you know sought after by a a, a state agent using these techniques are probably minimal. So yeah, I just get those updates well, done as fast as it's you a can. problem that I, have I mean to say that. it's public now, but I don't think the tools are out yet, so you don't have to worry yet about the script kitties. But that can only be a few days away. Yeah, yeah. I have to say that on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm more, I'm less concerned about being targeted by a foreign agent <laughs> than I am by some uh, some kid in the next uh, the next house over who is probably like I was when I was 13 or 14 years old, where it's like, oh my God, you mean this this code? I this code could actually do this. Wow, I wonder if we can do that instead. And then once you are on someone else's network, gee, I wonder what resources I can find on this other person's network without being necessarily malicious, just being. A teenager without a sense of how no 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 the fact that the fact that you didn't actually break a window and go into my house and take my TV set and leave with the TV set that doesn't mean that you didn't violate my home by doing this uh, or people who will say gee what what a bunch of interesting photos Andy has on his server I'm going to take them and then put amusing comments on them and post them on Reddit it's that's the stuff that I'm more worried about I'm worried about a, again a kid who is a lot more has a 
generally a lot more clever than a lot more clever than I am because they're spending nine or ten hours a day like I might have been when I was a teenager playing with this amazingly cool toy and learning incredibly cool stuff. The amount of obsession that only a teenager could apply uh, towards uh, a new adventure. So I was I mean, I was not I was not doing I was doing things as, as a teenager that might be termed very illegal today. Uh, they were innocent uh, in my own head back then, but again, going through someone else's computer a thousand miles away just because they left a door open doesn't mean that they were inviting people inside. That's a hard thing for kids to understand. The uh, so that's, that's why things like this kind of get me concerned. The security researcher who, who discovered this, uh, Matty Van Hoff, ha has a website, crackattacks.com, K-R-A-C-K, attacks.com. There's a video there you can watch. It's also on YouTube that shows the use of a Python script to implement the attack. He has not released it, thank goodness, he, especially because a Python script would be easy enough for somebody to, you know, kind of weaponize. He says it'll be released, though, once everyone has had a reasonable chance to update their devices. I'm not sure what that means, or, you know, how long that will be. Uh, but the key uh, here is, as you said, Renee, that we don't need a new version of WPA. Yeah. You can patch WPA. You want to make sure that your router is patched as soon as possible. So check with your router manufacturer, see if they have a timeline. I don't think any. I think Ubiquity has been patched. Meraki's been the patched. Enterprise Ubiquity. I don't know if they're commercial. Enterprise has been, has been patched. Right? Yeah. Uh, so the patches are very few so far, but they will be pouring out. I'm sure over the next few weeks. Update as quickly as you can. Update your. Uh, so it's not just the, the routers. The client and the access point have to be patched. And then that becomes the big issue if you have devices, and I bet you almost everybody does on your network that are not getting firmware updates. And that's where it's going to really be a big issue. So you're going to want to check, you know, if you have a Ring video doorbell, you want to make sure they're updating. Yes. If you have, uh, you know, IP cameras in your house, you want to make sure they're getting updated. Uh, all of that must be updated. And anything that doesn't get updated... Your echoes have to be updated. You know, anything that doesn't get updated must be removed. I think either remove from your network or put on a separate network, as Steve has recommended for years, uh, because IoT is so unpredictable. Yeah. He generally recommends putting an IoT not on a guest network on your same router, but on a separate routing network. And I'm going to be doing that uh, tonight. <laughs> this is one of those things where it's likely we won't understand the full ramifications of it for some time to yeah. come just because of the breadth yeah. of the... Big, exploit. big story. Uh, easily the biggest story of the week. And again, uh, Security Now is coming up. Steve has already said he's going to be uh, uh, talking about this. So there will be a lot more uh, details, more technical. And I know some people are sensitive to us saying that this is a big deal and say, well, it's just security alarmism. I I'm, I'm tend to be very conservative about raising alarms over security because I think a lot of it is sensationalized. But I, I don't think you can look at an exploit based on WPA, which all of us have have been saying it's secure for years yeah. uh, as being anything short of a, of something you need to pay absolute attention to for the immediate future. You could, I mean, also, look, you could wait. I mean, uh, if you want, don't want to be sensationalistic, you could wait until ransomware is injected into thousands of people's systems. And, and, you know, I mean, until stuff happens, then it would be cause for fire, hair on fire. But this is this is a flaw that could open the door for that kind of thing fairly. And easily. the worst part of it is that you are only as secure as the worst technology you have right. on your network for right. this. That it's not the best. Yeah. The Google stuff, the Apple stuff, the Microsoft stuff might be fantastic. But there's a ton of other stuff on a lot of people's networks that will just obliviate all of the good security practices yeah. that those companies employ. Yeah. If anything, you, you try not to scare people. This is a, but this is a, this is just a good opportunity to remind people of what best practice, what of what the best practices are, and why it's, you should not be scared of every device you put on your network, but be aware that every time it's like changing the locks in your house. You don't just simply buy whatever's cheapest at Walmart. That that will change the security of your house. The fact that you've changed a lock, uh, and so as so long as you keep reminding people that. There are things that uh, there there are things that you can control. Uh, you can uh, you can mix. These things are designed to be updated to become more secure to solve problems when uh, vulnerabilities occur. That there are activities that are dangerous and you should try to avoid. And if you can't avoid them, try to use these solutions like VPNs that will at least mitigate some of the danger. You don't want to you don't want to get people to you know run screaming and naked into the streets. Streets. You just want them to. <laughs> Give them the tools so that they will hear something like this and they will know uh, what they're supposed to do with it, yeah. do with this information, how they can make themselves more safe. Yeah.